I'm Corbett Wall with DB Auction here with your feeder flash for Monday August the 3rd brought to you in part by the International Brangus Breeders Association. This is Brangus country. The International Brangus Breeders Association invites you to realize the benefits of Brangus genetics in your herd. For more information visit GoBrangus.com. First report of August and with that we're going to have the Zach Tran market of the month for July and this month it is Denny Rezac Livestock Commission Company in St. Mary's, Kansas. And, and it's, it's a cumulative thing here. Uh, Rezac Livestock has just continued to have good sales after good sales after good sales. And, and you know, they're sitting in an area pretty rural right there, but I tell you what, they can sell the cattle. And they normally merchandise those cattle in load lots they bring top dollar. They're sitting on the north side of, of the Flint Hills there and getting markets and prices that are, that are as good or better than they got in the heart of the Flint Hills on those green grass yearlings all through there. They sell brack grounded yearlings just as well. But uh, we want to recognize Denny Rezac Livestock Commission in St. Mary's, Kansas for July's Market of the Month uh, sponsored by Zach Tran and they will get uh, a sign recognizing the fact that they were the uh, Zach Tran Market of the Month and they'll also get some swag there to share with their employees and uh, we just want to congratulate Rezac Livestock Commission for being July's Market of the Month with Feeder Flash. So going on here, uh, we talked about this past week and it was, uh, it was kind of a disappointing week for all of us that are that are all about market transparency and competition and everything that goes with uh, the the Denver business meeting of NCBA uh, was held and uh, we we had some guys from the Midwest the affiliates there that went in there with ideas of trying to get some policy with NCBA to encourage and promote uh, market transparency market competition and uh, they wanted a, a minimum uh, negotiated cash trade and uh, they fought for that, tried to get it, didn't happen. Uh, I mean we knew that the deck was stacked against us with the, the, the big affiliates uh, of uh, TCFA and Kansas Livestock Association and, and basically the uh, hierarchy of NCBA totally against it. Uh, they're, they've all sold out to the corporate feeders and the big packers, but uh, we give it a hell of a try. Uh, they had over 20 uh, other state affiliates that were uh, promoting a, a, a minimum negotiated cash requirement too. They were ready to fight for that, but uh, in the end it just wasn't enough to votes to get there. And it's been said, and I will repeat it, this is exactly what would happen in our presidential campaigns if we didn't have an electoral college because uh, if we didn't have an electoral college in our presidential um, race then then your big cities would basically dictate everything that happened and uh, you know you had New York City, Los Angeles, places like that they would basically pick your president every time and they, they brought about that electoral college many many years ago I mean back in the colonial days back in uh, uh, the days when it, it, you know people would have to drive by a wagon or ride a horse for days and days and days to go vote. Now I guess they're just going to make it where they're going to send out uh, votes by mail and, and anybody that picks up that uh, package or anybody that intercepts it in between can vote for whoever they want. But uh, back in those days it was a big deal to go vote and people would ride or, or ride in a wagon for days and days and weeks. To, to get to a place where they could vote. And they made the electoral college so that your smaller, more rural places would have as le at least as much say as your big cities did. And, uh, and that's kind of what happened in Denver at the NCBA deal. Uh, the guys that had the, the most uh, fed cattle sales volume, guys that had the most uh, dollars, uh, checkoff dollars in their pockets, they, they dictated the whole thing. So uh, it didn't matter how many uh, other areas, more rural areas and states outside of that ha had, uh, even though they provide the cattle, many of the cattle that are in those feedlots 
in those Southern Plains feedlot regions, even though they provide those cattle and raise those cattle and, and pay dollars uh, the first time to get those cattle to where they're going, uh, they they didn't have as much say and so they they got bullied around and, and didn't get the deal done and they uh, basically watered it down to where it's nothing now and so uh, there's no need to worry about that we can still fight for the 5014 legislation that Chuck Grassley has uh, before the Senate you've also got a, a, a similar bill uh, before the house there but uh, we've just got Pat Roberts that is just stonewalling this deal and he's the chairman of the Senate Ag Committee and uh, he will not have a hearing or a vote on this deal and and he's done I mean he's he's just got a few more weeks left and, and he's had a long uh, career there but it, it behooves him personally uh, with some aides and some friends that he has there that, that are uh, backed by the, uh, the big corporate uh, Packers that he doesn't want to put it up. And so he's not going to put it up for a hearing and a, and a vote so where we can get uh, some, some change within the industry, something that would save the industry, save your small uh, cow-calf operators. And I've told you guys many times, this is not for your cattle feeders. This is for your cattle producers and your backgrounders so that they will continue to have a price where they can still operate. I mean, we want people still raising cattle that, that need to do it for a living and not just people that have money uh, from some other source that are just doing it so they can be cowboys. We need it so that people can make a living, pay their taxes and, and uh, maintain their their. Uh, their investment in their property and go on from here but uh, I tell you what they're just getting stonewalled here and nobody wants to do it and the big money is taken over here but uh, that was very disappointing but we will still support the 5014 legislation as we go forth uh, what else is going on in the industry exports have been ginormous huge exports and a lot of them from Asia even mainland China I mean, they're fighting a hundred year flood over there. They need protein. Uh, they need real protein. And, uh, and they're they are buying product from us. So that's a great thing. What's helping that? Our U.S. dollar is at the lowest point in two years. You know, a lot of that has to do with the COVID-19. But uh, it's a bargain for them. And, and uh, it, it promotes uh, a lot of exports. So that's a great thing as we go forward here. But let's talk about the board for the last week. August live cattle futures. Monday was down 90. Tuesday was up 47. Wednesday up 55. Thursday up 27. Friday up $1.10. Board was very supportive the last half of the week. August live cattle futures ending the week at 102.82. And we're in August now. That's our spot month. That was up a dollar and a half. October at 107.87. Looks pretty promising there. Up 277. Talk about your feeder cattle futures. August feeder cattle. Monday was down 270. Monday was a hard day for all ag commodities. But then the rest of the week was all positive. Tuesday was up 135. Wednesday up $1.27. Thursday up 105. And Friday up 165 with August feeder cattle ending the week at 144.67 up 262 for the week september was up 347 at 146.22 so uh, a positive week on the cattle futures there let's talk about your fat cattle market through thursday they'd sold 89,900 head so uh had a little more trade on friday should have well over 100,000 head for the week uh, cash basis and and that's a positive thing your live sales the steers and heifers range from 92 to 10250 but uh, your weighted average on live steers was around 9850 and that was up about a buck and a quarter uh, for, compared to the the similar quotes from the week before your dress sales of steers and heifers from 157 all the way to 170 weighted average on dress steers was just over 160 and that's about two bucks higher for the week so we had a positive week in your cash trade box speed cutout values were kind of mixed uh, your weighted average for last week's sales for the whole week uh, your weighted average on choice cuts 202.34 78 cents higher than the weighted average from the previous week selects 189.86 down 85 cents on the weighted average from the previous week 
we had uh, a pretty decent uh, movement there on the volume, but uh, your loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings were about 627 loads, and that's pretty much typical. Your slaughter, 638,000 for the week. That's 8,000 less than the previous week, but 5,000 more than the same week a year ago. And, and this would really, if, if it ends up being true after we get actual data, this would be the first week that we eclipsed a year ago slaughter. So we'll see if that happens. Look at your feeder cattle market, your real-time index on DV auction late in the week, ended the week at 138.60. That was 42 cents lower, actually, than the previous week. But uh, if you're wondering if, if that real-time index is ringing true with your CME cash feeder cattle index, uh, your real-time index was 138.60, your CME cash feeder cattle index 138.58, so two cents apart. Let's talk about your uh, your cash sales in your in your auction markets uh, for the past week. They were actually steady to three dollars lower. We had some impressive sales early in the week, but when we got to the midpoint of the week, where we saw the big gains from last week, then we started to come off a little bit. And and to tell you the truth, these feedlots that are really pushing on these green grass yearlings, and it's it wasn't really your uh, your corporate feedlots. It was more your big family feeding operations that have that have been in business for for many many decades there but the big pushers there on the cattle that were really perform uh the, the cattle that come in there with compensatory gain and really go to town and your quality top cattle there they they still wanted them but they were just full i mean they they've had they've had so many loads come out of the flint hills and the osage they're just about had all they can handle and they're they're running short of pen space there so uh, we saw that the guys started to back off of those a little bit, but uh, still selling very, very impressive, but uh, just coming off some of the big highs that we saw there a week or two ago. Uh, your big sales late in the week, I mean, of course, winter livestock, Dodge City, Kansas, 11,600 head for their big special. Normally they would have had the king of the ring uh, auctioneer contest uh, due to cut down on the crowds just a little bit for the COVID. They didn't end up having that, but they still had their huge uh, grass yearling special there right during the Dodge City days of the rodeo there in Dodge City, Kansas. That was the 84th anniversary of winter livestock auction in Dodge City, Kansas. Man, is that fantastic or what? But I tell you what, they just, uh, you look at this report and this is just for Saturday out of Dodge City, Kansas on Cattle Market Central. Uh, this is your real time quotes out of there and you notice they didn't have any calves and, and they didn't have any heifers so I didn't include them. But look at all these grass yearling steers here and it's unbelievable. Had over 2,900 head of eight weight steers there and most all of these would be green grass yearlings i would say all of them would be in the eight weight category they averaged 854 at 138.75 on the weighted average price on your nine weight grass yearling steers there out of dodge city kansas over 2,000 head of those in the nine weight category average 939 at 131.75 those are very impressive quotes for a huge, huge slug of cattle there. And, and congratulations to Winter Livestock on 84 years in business there. How about some other individual quotes? St. Ons, South Dakota, St. Ons Livestock, Justin Tupper there, my good buddy right there. I mean, he can sell cattle and on Friday he did. He had some yearlings in there. Bring as much as any we've seen uh, all summer here. 188 head. 851 pound steers in St. Ange, South Dakota, bring $144. Uh, but the big quote I'm going to talk about was on some calves out of Torrington, Wyoming. Torrington Livestock Markets had 53 head, 521 pound steer calves at $180. And that's your feeder flash for Monday.